Panda Hydraulics started in 1999. We have been specialist in piston pump and motor repair, particularly specializing in post exhaust because it is the best and the biggest hydraulic company in the world. And uh, over the years, we have built up and became authorized service centers for many manufacturers because of our excellent quality of work and our diligence and technical uh, trained te attention to technical skills. And very good test rigs. We have actually three test rigs here, and uh, the biggest one we can test up to a thousand horsepower. Things like this: AQF LM 1000, fixed displacement, no de-stroking, full gradual, full flow. And uh, over the years, we have uh, gained the trust of most manufacturers, and ultimately, in this year 2000, Rexroad is happy to appoint us as certified partner, certified excellence partner and we will not let them down. Prior to today, we have already been working very closely with Rexroth in terms of uh, purchasing of spare parts to service and repair Rexroth farm in Malta. And I think they are also happy that when the Rexroth farm is down, it can be up and running again very quickly. And it's to end down as well. All the parts here, all the labor, we work overnight to uh, repair farms as well, so that the vessel can leave in the morning. How are you, Roland? Very good, Casey. Good. Very, very glad to be in this position today. Yep. Thanks very much for your help. And I think that we can look forward to a very great partnership. Yes, I, I very much encourage, and you've heard the value adds that Casey's team brings with him to Bosch Rexroth. They're totally excited to be on board with us. I'm totally excited to have you and uh, to look forward to expand our business, beat the competition, replace pumps like this one with a Rexroth pump that uh, does uh, maybe even a better service than one or the other part. And with your help, I think we have a bright future in front of us. Uh, not only in service, I see even the vision that we can venture into transforming mobile machines, which is our mission and ambition for the mobile industry. Yeah. And um, so your son, I think, is well equipped. Yeah. Where is he? Come on. Roy, come here. Roy. So it's not only Casey, it's his son and also his team. If you swing around, there's more people yeah, that all basically drive this business here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Welcome to the family. Thank you.
Di Jambi banyak permasalahan, antara lain di Sungai Gelam, sumurnya Gesi, dan memiliki beban nampir yang sangat tinggi, serta memiliki tipe sumur itu S-curve atau Directional Well. Permasalahan-permasalahan ini sering menjadi kendala kami dalam memproduksikan sumur di Pertamina EP. Saya dari Bosch Rexroth Indonesia, kita bekerja sama dengan PT Artificial Teknologi Persada untuk memberikan solusi kepada Pertamina Aset 1 Jambi. Bosch Rexroth menawarkan Electro Hydraulic Pump Drive Unit yang disebut dengan Crude Oil Pumping Unit. Crude Oil Pumping Unit ini terdiri dari Complete Hydraulic Power Pack dan aktuator berupa silinder yang terpasang langsung ke tubing wellhead. Alasan kami, PT Pertamina EP Aset 1 Pil Jambi menggunakan unit HPU ini yang pertama ialah karena faktor lingkungan dengan unit ini tidak ada limbah yang mana limbah dari minyak bisa diakibatkan oleh rubber sapping box pada pumping unit yang selalu bocor itu terjadi ceceran minyak. Dan keunggulannya lagi ialah dia memiliki langkah yang sangat panjang yang mana tidak dimiliki oleh unit lain dia bisa mencapai panjang 200 in atau bahkan mungkin mencapai 240 in. Dan juga unit ini mampu mengangkat beban sampai 30.000 pon dibandingkan unit lain yang lebih kecil. Itulah kenapa kami mencoba energi terbarukan ini di PT Pertamina Aset Jambi agar untuk meningkatkan kualitas produksi dengan menambah panjang langkah tentunya mengurangi gerak naik turun pompa dan mengurangi limit penggunaan pompa menjadi umur lebih panjang. Tujuh keuntungan yang kami tawarkan adalah Simple installation Easy maintenance Fast machine startup Remote control Direct output data Long durability Dan yang terakhir, higher productivity Terkait kepuasan terhadap HPU Rexroth ini sangat memuaskan Terutama dalam penanggulangan permasalahan-permasalahan yang terjadi di lapangan Teman-teman dari tim Rexroth sangat cepat sekali dan tanggap dalam menyelesaikan segala permasalahan yang terjadi sehingga seluruh permasalahan atau downtime yang terjadi dapat diminimalisir. You win. สวัสดีครับผมชื่อนายเฉลิมชัยศรีวงจันทร์นะครับปัจจุบันผมเป็นยูนิตเมนเจอร์บริษัทนิวแมกจำกัดนะครับบริษัทนิวแมกเราเป็นตัวแทนจำหน่ายอุปกรณ์สำหรับโรงงานอุตสาหกรรมเช่นอุตสาหกรรมอุปกรณ์ไฮดรอลิกอุปกรณ์นิวเมติกปั๊มสุญญากาศปั๊มบัดลมไส้กรองแล้วเราจะเป็นตัวแทนอย่างเป็นทางการหรือ CE Partner จากบริษัทบอสเล็กกว่าประเทศไทยสำหรับาทางนิวแมคแล้วลูกค้าของเรามีอยู่ที่หลากหลายอุตสาหกรรมนะครับไม่ว่าจะเป็นงานเลเดอร์ออโตโมทีฟงานโรงเหล็กงานอลูมิเนียมงานโมบายก็อีกอีกหลายๆงานนะครับซึ่งได้มีความร่วมมืออันดีจากบริษัทบอสเล็กกว่าประเทศไทยเสมอก็วันนี้ผมขอยกตัวอย่างงานด้านงานซ่อมที่มีความสำคัญงานหนึ่งคือเราได้รับความไว้วางใจจากลูกค้าบริษัทซิมเมอร์เมทัลฟอร์ตแอนดาร์นะครับเป็นงานซ่อมปั๊ม A4 วิดโอไซส์500นะครับปั๊มลูกนี้เป็นส่วนประกอบสำคัญของเครื่องรีดอลูมิเนียมนะครับปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นคือแรงดันในระบบของเครื่องรีดมันตกลงทำให้มีผลต่อลายผลิตของลูกค้าถ้ามีความพร้อมของเครื่องมือและอุปกรณ์ต่างๆนะครับโดยมีเทคโนโลยีที่ทางสมัยแล้วก็มีคุณภาพงานซ่อมที่ค่อนข้างดีเยี่ยมนะครับซึ่งผมคิดว่ามันเป็นหัวใจหลักของการทำงานสิ่งที่ลูกค้าประทับใจนะครับก็ลูกค้ามีความประทับใจหลายๆอย่างนะครับไม่ว่าจะเป็นการส่งมอบงานที่ตรงต่อเวลาเป็นไปตามระยะเวลาที่กำหนดนะครับมีบริการหลังการขายที่ดีการให้คำปรึกษาแล้วก็คอยแก้ไขปัญหาต่างๆให้ลูกค้านะครับซึ่งสิ่งต่างๆที่กล่าววันนี้จะเกิดขึ้นไม่ได้เลยครับถ้าเราไม่ได้รับความร่วมมือที่ดีจากบอลเล็กหลอกประเทศไทยการ
kami PT Timah merupakan perusahaan pertambangan timah terintegrasi yang aktivitasnya mulai dari eksplorasi, penambangan, pengolahan, dan ekspor. Untuk melakukan aktivitas penambangan di laut, PT Timah menggunakan kapal isa produksi atau biasa disebut dengan KIP. Kapal isa produksi ini atau KIP dibangun oleh PT Dok dan Perkapalan Air Kantung yang biasa disebut dengan PT Dak. PT Dak berdiri tahun 1996 merupakan anak perusahaan PT Timah TBK dan PT Dak bagian dari Inalung Group dalam hal ini sebagai cucu dari Inalung Group. Saat ini saya berdiri di samping kapal isap produksi Timah 23 di mana kapal ini e, adalah kapal pesanan dari PT Timah digunakan untuk mencari e, cadangan untuk menambang timah yang ada di laut di mana KIP ini mempunyai kapasitas produksi untuk pemindahan tanah itu 350 sampai dengan 500 meter kubik per jam di KIP ini bisa menambang untuk timahnya sendiri itu di kedalaman laut sampai dengan 60 meter salah satu di sistem hidrolik adalah sistem winches dia harus mampu mengakomodir dengan berat kurang lebih sampai dengan 100 ton jadi sistem wind ini sangat penting sekali dalam mendukung operasi maupun dalam sistem keamanannya kalau kapal ini dioperasikan bisa saja di kedalaman air sampai dengan 60 meter tentunya kita berharap sistem hidrolik yang dibangun itu bisa safety tidak terkontaminasi dengan air ini bisa berakibat fatal Bos Rexroad memberikan solusi sistem hidrolik secara lengkap untuk digunakan di KIP seperti hidrolik motor Hydraulic pump, manifold, dan control valve. Dengan menggunakan sistem hidrolik atau dengan menggunakan solusi sistem hidrolik dari Bos Rex Road, KIP mendapatkan sistem hidrolik yang handal, desain yang kompak, dan dukungan layanan purna jual. Dan dengan fitur-fitur tersebut akan membantu untuk menurunkan resiko downtime dari KIP itu sendiri serta meningkatkan efisiensi operasional dari KIP yang pada akhirnya akan membantu untuk mencapai target produksi yang telah ditentukan untuk KIP. Kita berharap dengan kerjasama dengan Rex Road Indonesia ini kita bisa menyelesaikan pembangunan KIP Timah 23 ini bisa tepat waktu sesuai dengan jadwal yang sudah kita buatkan. are the snippet in ASEAN and Oceania, particularly in Indonesia and Thailand. Of course, we have several more and we'll even feature another one later today. But for now, as we are about to answer the next session, I would like to remind you that if you have a question during the presentation, feel free to reach us on the Q&A features on your Zoom, all right? For now, though, let's call up our next speaker, whom you might remember from last year's Hydraulic Tech Talk, Mark Bowman from Australia. Hello, Mark. Hello, Mia. How are you, Mark? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. And it's so good to have you back on Hydraulic Tech Talk, Mark. It's good to be back, thank you. <laughs> okay, last year on Hydraulic Tech Talk, you spoke to us about digital after sales service. What will you be showing us this time? So today in line with uh, the focus on service, we'd like to speak, or I would like to speak to you about servicing of energy cylinders and systems. Okay, very well then, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, so as just mentioned, today we're gonna to talk about energy cylinder systems and what we can do as uh, Bosch Rexroth AZR in regards to servicing of these for you. So what we're going to cover today is a bit of an introduction to energy cylinder systems, where where they are used, uh, the, type, the, the different types, what they are, why they are used, and the 
also extra point of difference. Here you can see the typical um, power station and a typical turbine installation. These red circles you can see here are our energy cylinder, our energy cylinder, sorry. And um, this is a typical example of a, a standard phosphorex rod DCS energy cylinder. So where, where are they used? So you can see the generator on the left-hand side is controlled by the turbine itself and our energy cylinders are controlling the flow of either the, 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 the fuel or the steam through to the turbine which is coupled to the generator creating your electricity and power. Uh, the most common types we have, we have two types generally. So on the left-hand side, you can see the CGE1, which is mainly used for steam, steam systems. On the right-hand side, we have CGE2, which is mainly used for uh, gas type or gas style systems. So what are they? So here you'll see a cross-sectional drawing of our standard steam energy cylinder. Um, basically, they're a large spring offset servo cylinder. They control the fuel flow through the turbine uh, with steam uh, that's been driven by steam or fossil fuels. The amount of fuel flow through the turbine determines the speed of the, of the turbine and hence its power generating capability. Why are they used? Um, here you'll see a typical draw, a typical circle, a typical layout um, of a system. So again, they're used to control the fuel through the turbine. Uh, this is a, a standard example made up of uh, 10 energy cylinders, a main stop valve, control valve, intercept valve, and reheat stop. So the most um, the one that is of, of most important, basically, is the actual control valve. This is the one that is physically controlling the overall speed of the fuel in and the overall control of the turbine. These are mainly controlled and driven by a servo, hydraulic servo valve, high response servo valve. So why are they used? It's used to supply steam into a turbine which must be controlled and stopped in cases of emergency. The hydraulic cylinder actuator is, act is mounted directly to the steam valve armature and overall they're to control the safety of the actuator by the use of the mechanical spring assemblies that would either fail to a normally open or fail to a normally closed position. On the right hand side you'll see a typical circuit and a typical drawing of this uh, installation and application. And so the types of services offered, we break this up into two different types of services offered. Um, services that can be offered by or local country units in the ASEAN region. Um, uh, field service type of um, services that can be carried out on site and workshop repairs of the overall system. Um, okay, so just a, a basic general overview of um, some of the services that can be carried out on site. Uh, the visual inspection of the cylinder. Um, this can be checking all hydraulic lines, uh, inspection of hydraulic components, looking for leaks, uh, electrical connections, contamination um, that we would see hopefully on the filter indicator, 
Um, we can also do manual testing, chrome thickness tests, uh, limit switch verification, um, providing a detailed inspection reports for upcoming shutdowns and outages uh, and, and, and recommendations. One of the other things that we can do, not in all circumstances, but in some cases, we can actually do visual inspections internally of the springs. And you'll see uh, a little bit later through the presentation, some uh, failed uh, components that could have been picked up uh, earlier if they had have had some uh, on-site inspections and preventative maintenance. One of the other things um, that we can also do on site uh, during small shutdowns and small outages would be such thing as uh, filter element changes on the cylinders themselves, but also servicing of the hydraulic power packs and power units themselves on site. Um, some of the services that um, we would carry out on a, on a standard repair, carried out in our, in our workshops, um, would be uh, inspection of the complete cylinder uh, and all its components, uh, disassembly, disassembly report, providing all this detailed information back to the customer, um, cleaning of all components, replace all seals and filters. We would then repair all the individual valving, um, the pocket valves and the servo valves themselves, uh, reassemble, complete reassembly and fully function test of the cylinder. Um, with uh, new, new painting uh, and any additional reconditioning that may be required. Um, this can be done in a, in a short period of generally speaking, 10 to 14 days. Um, okay, so why use Bosch Rexroth Serve? Some of the um, features and advantages and benefits of using Bosch Rexroth is these are done in a competent um, inspection and reconditioning work that's all carried out by trained uh, service, trained departments, tra or, or Bosch Rexroth certif certified people that are carrying out these repairs and servicing. Um, qualified inspections and reconditioning thanks to standard guidelines and processes. Um, optimal power and reliability ensured through the use of original spare parts. Uh, cylinders are repaired and tested back to the original specifications from the OEM. Um, some of the uh, advantages are that we can optimize downtime by scheduling and programming in the repairs uh, at, a, at a mutual uh, agreed time to the customer, uh, which helps uh, the overall uh, reduce downtime uh, with planned downtime and, and costs. Point of difference again uh, by using Bosch Rexroth is that these are designed predominantly and primarily for, for safety, as I mentioned before. Um, they're designed and tested for reliability in Germany. They're fatigue tested for guaranteed performance, giving you an overall service, service life. They're supplied to and installed by major turbine manufacturers around the world, such as Toshiba, Siemens, Dusan. Mitsubishi, Atari, and GE, General Electric. So the competence status uh, around the world, uh, we're mainly focusing here on ASEAN, is um, we have field service repair capabilities in uh, all country units, um, with the repairs of the cylinders currently being carried out here in, in Australia, in our Brisbane facility. So in this slide, you'll see uh, how and what we use to test the cylinders. Um, so Bosch Rexroth Australia has been certified since 2012 as the Certified Repair Centre, um, offering sales, repair, parts and field service. Mm. Uh, this here is a Catasys online testing tool that is connected back to the factory in Germany for each and every cylinder. They upload the actual test criteria and parameters for the individual specific cylinder. Um, 
logging performance and data logging, all the information and the overall port back to the factory in Germany. That then gives us an overall pass or failure of this cylinder. So in this slide here, you'll see some of the specialised tools and equipment, and again, uh, the benefits and advantages of using Bosch Rexroth servers is that they're tested according to and back to the original OEM standards and specifications. Um, the repairs are carried out with all the required and necessary specialised tooling. Uh, we have the access and use of all the original documentation back from the factory to make sure that they're going back to the original specifications and parameters prior to leaving the facility after they've been repaired. Um, the repairs and services are carried out by Rexroth trained and certified staff. Uh, here you can see the testing of a cylinder here in Australia. Um, this is a, a, I guess a, a live actually connected cylinder uh, with some photos of this during the, the setup and testing of a cylinder here in Brisbane. You can see with the Caddis's machine and the, and the test rig in the background behind it. Uh, on the right, you'll see just a, a, a quick snapshot of part of the Caddis's setup and test. So all reports from Bosch Rexroth are generated in the same format. They're stored centrally and are available for the customer from any Bosch Rexroth service center around the world. Again, this is just a snapshot of the standard uh, test report at the end and some uh, logging and testing of the parameters um, of a certain function throughout the testing procedure. Just some examples of repairs that have been carried out. Uh, you see on the left photo, um, a whole lot of cylinders uh, up on the test, sorry, up on the, on the stands. Uh, the middle slide was uh, for another customer that some cylinders, four cylinders, have been repaired and tested. And on the right hand slide, you'd see the cylinders either just coming in to the workshop for repair or just leaving after being repaired. On this slide, you can see some uh, examples of uh, either poor repairs or lack of maintenance. I mentioned earlier that one of the things that we can carry out as part of the on site, uh, on -site service and inspections is some inspections looking at the spring box and spring chamber. Uh, you'll see some of the slides here, you'll see some failed springs that are in, internally in the spring pack, spring stack, which these could have been prevented or picked up earlier if we had have had some on-site inspections done, which could have prevented this a little bit earlier. Uh, here you can see some examples of either poor repairs or the use of non-genuine parts. Uh, the left-hand slide, you can see um, someone's manufactured a piston, um, potentially not to the correct specifications and dimensions. In the middle, uh, we also, here in the middle, you can see uh, a non genuine rod that is dimensionally different um, to the original, uh, and also some incorrect um, seals on the right hand side. In this one here, you can see some. Um, Seals that weren't replaced uh, have been used with either some Teflon paste or Teflon tape to try and do the sealing. The middle one is incorrect fitting of uh, seals, uh, the, the incorrect position within the, in the gland of the cylinder. On the right hand side, again, the use of either some um, PTFE type uh, paste or, or some celastic to try and do the sealing. Here we've got some technical information that may be of some interest and some use to some people that work in the power stations that have some energy cylinders and in particular use uh, quinolubric based type oil. Uh, one of the things that we've actually picked up and found out of, of recent times is uh, on this slide you can see towards the left is the total acid uh, level, I think it's 10, total so a total acid number, which is the 10, 10 level. The new oil is um, comes in at a level of less than two. And we're starting to get a trend of uh, oils that are up around the 10 level of eight. Um, 
starting to degrade the um, starting to, to 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 have early degrading of the of the cylinder seals themselves. Um, <clears throat> additional services that we, we 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 can offer and can do is we have uh, carry out repairs. And we are certified here in Australia to do repairs to Mayfag cylinders, Schaefer cylinders, Sulcer cylinders, and Woodward cylinders. Um, uh, some of the other services that we can offer is obviously is repairs um, to the hydroelectric power units themselves, uh, replacement of components uh, on the hydroelectric power packs, um, starter systems for um, gas turbines. Uh, we're starting to see some more of that happening here in Australia. Um, some turbine rotor here, and also um, some uh, ash conveyors. So here in Australia, we know that we have some ash conveyors that has some um, uh, of uh, our products and components on them as well. Um, so new technologies i'd like to briefly introduce you to uh, which may be again of interest to some people out there um, is introduced to some uh, electromechanical cylinders uh, with hydrostatic transmissions um, so the electro the electromechanical cylinder so the electromechanical actuator with hydrostatic drive system is designed to complete the range of existing hydroelectric actuators for the control of stop and trip functions for process valves. The actuator is suitable for mounting on valves, which are used for the control of liquids, gases, and steam up to a SIL3 safety level. The electromechanical actuator consists of hydrostatic linear drive and superimposed spring supported trip function. So the applications for these are very similar to the ones that we're, we're looking at now for the PCS energy cylinders in the current turbine uh, systems. So the applications are for the process valve actuating devices for gas and steam turbines, um, butterfly valves with fail-safe positions. Um, we could offer retrofit projects, modernization and optimization of these um, systems. Uh, so some of the advantages of these is state-of-the-art uh, for actuating systems. Um, one of the big advantages is they have their own, they're, they're completely self-contained. So they have their own hydroelectric power pack, valving, everything all on the actuator themselves. So there's no need for an external power unit, reducing the space requirements. There's no need for the installation of pipes. Um, in some instances, it reduces the oil, oil fluid and the volume of oil by up to approximately 98%. Um, some of the other advantages too is if you have a system that has 10 cylinders that would have one centrally located HPU for controlling and operating these, is it would allow you to be able to potentially work on one individual cylinder, one individual cylinder that was giving you problems or issues without the need to shut down the whole turbine and the whole system uh, to be able to operate on either the HPU or the failed actuator. Some of the features is the electrical interface for power and sig signal transmission. Um, I won't go into all the features, but um, if you have any uh, questions, they can certainly go to your local country unit, uh, Boss Retro, for any further information. Um, so, again, some of the um, scope of supply options. Um, would be the actuator, a frequency converter with the, the complete PLC. And you can see in this slide here, the, the total overall reduction by the uh, actuator coupled straight onto the um, control control valve. Uh, and literally it's a plug and play. You plug in the electrics and, and, and it's, apart from the commissioning, it's good to go. You don't have the installation of all the pipe work and the uh, HPU itself. So another uh, example is a reference system um, that's been installed and been in use since 2014 of this type of system and technology. Um, the control valve actuator, uh, trip actuator, the application software, the control cabinet, 
um, and the cabling to go with it. Um, they're able to run up to uh, systems with 80 degree ambient temperature, um, predominantly designed for horizontal installations uh, with high control dynamics, uh, being overall controlling of the turbine speed with plus or minus two RPM accuracy. So some of the things that the new, this new style EMAH can do is a lot of um, field data acquisition or data logging. Um, so you can see here that they can record um, such things as uh, operating hours, um, failures, trips, temperatures, and overall giving you a data logging capability of um, field downtime, um, predictive maintenance, um, which in the, in the long run will give you more um, uptime uh, and better planning for uh, what's happening with your overall system. So finally, I've just um, put here some uh, links and videos that I'm happy to share with your colleagues and counterparts around uh, Boss Workshop ASEAN if you would like to be able to share this with them. Um, a link to uh, a LinkedIn post on um, our energy cylinders, a white two-page white paper post again on our uh, LinkedIn on our energy cylinders, and um, OSTube or YouTube video showing um, a, a, a workshop repair of uh, an energy cylinder. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark, uh, for talking to us about servicing of energy cylinders and systems. And looking forward for that video, Mark. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another service capability from Bosch Rexrod. And if you have any questions for Mark, please click on the Q&A button. Once again, the Q&A button section and type your question there. We'll try to answer as many as que uh, questions as possible uh, with the minute uh, we have. So now, we're going to wait for some questions to come in. So now I think we're ready. Let's give some questions a go, right, Mark? Okay, this question uh, to Mark Bowman. Where is the cylinder workshop? Can we repair or do the service of energy cylinder locally in Singapore, Indonesia, or Malaysia? Because the delivery and price is one of our consent. Um, very good question. Uh, the again, this is something that would need to be just locally with your local Bosch Rexroth. Um, the preferred option currently is to have the major repairs carried out here in Australia. Um, however, that does not mean in the near future that that is not always going to be the way. Mm. So feel free to reach us out uh, through the partners on your region uh, if you have any further inquiries. All right, the second question, uh, Mark, when you're making a field service inspection, will you then also look into that the plan, use the right oil? Yes, that is correct. Yep. So one of the things that we can offer and we can do is definitely make sure that they're using the right oil. Um, we can also take oil samples. Um, to further enhance the overall uh, condition monitoring of that system. All right, because the question come up because of some plants use just their turbine loop oil, Mark, and the OEM did not install a separate hydraulic system. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Again, that would be something that we probably need a little bit more information on so we could look at that specifically. All right. Okay, uh, specifically, how often should this be repaired, Mark? Typically, the um, energy cylinder itself uh, has standard repairs of usually around five to six years. This should come out, come out of the uh, turbine and have a full repair, major repair. Okay, so what is actually can be done on site? Sorry, can you ask? Repeat that one again. What can be done on site, Mark, with your service? Uh, so again, that can be broken up into two parts. Um, there is services and inspections uh, more than anything to be carried out whilst the system is running. 
Um, these would be visual inspections, uh, visual checks, possibly as I mentioned before, or inside the spring chamber in the spring pack. Uh, look for leaks, for leakage, take oil samples, um, and so on. That is, um, there's quite a lot of stuff that we can do on site while the system is running. Uh, but then when the system is down, as I mentioned before, if there is a short window, a short period, um, we would we do uh, filter inspections, filter changes, also inspect the filter bowls to see what contaminants and, and what it's like, uh, and also uh, possibly carry out repairs and servicing to the HPU itself. If, if that system has an individual standalone separate HPU, hydraulic power unit that is running um, the overall hydraulic system. All right, Mark, other than probably leakage, what to look out for on site? Uh, again, external leaks. Um, you're looking at the cylinder rod uh, condition itself to see if there's any damage or scoring. There are a number of uh, areas, that you, pretty much four areas that we could be looking for leaks. Um, and uh, again, the other main one would also be any uh, repair, uh, sorry, any uh, uh, corrosion around the steam end and the spring pack end. It could lead to premature, premature failure internally of the spring pack arrangement itself. Okay then, we still got time for more questions. Feel free once again to all of our audience watching today's event. If you have any question, please make a good use of the Q&A button on your Zoom and throw us some questions. Mark is here, ready to answer all of your questions. Uh, maybe uh, still about oil samples. Where is uh, the best place, uh, Mark, to take oil samples? Uh, generally speaking, um, if you, in the interest of the energy cylinder itself, if, if we're talking about the energy cylinder itself, the best place for the oil sample is at the energy cylinder. There is a couple of, generally speaking, there is a couple of test points on the cylinder, or there should at least be um, positions on the cylinder to fit test points. But uh, ideally, we like to take the oil sample at the cylinder. Um, sometimes, and a lot of times, we've seen that there is a lot, a long distance between the cylinder and the HPU, and quite often the oil doesn't travel all the way back to the HPU. So therefore, we like to get, uh, to get as close to the cylinder as possible to get a true indication of what the oil is like in the cylinder itself. We are still waiting for another question from our audience here. Maybe you would like to ask a to Mark. Just type in on the Q&A button section. We got one more minute to answer your questions because Mark Hiss is very busy. Thank you so much, Mark, for allocating time off to answer some questions and to give us a thorough presentation about the services from Rexroth. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, as we are afraid, it's about time. We're coming to the end of our session. The question that we did not get to answer right now, rest assured we will get back to you soon. After the show, once again, we'd like to remind you to reach us out through our partners. And if you have any further inquiries, feel free to reach us out then. Okay, I think the time is up. It's safe to say that we would like to thank Mark once again for joining us here. The service capabilities are sending from Bosch Rexroth. Stay safe, Mark. And keep on Thank moving. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Great to have you here. Thank you once again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'd also like to get your feedback of the presentation and the speakers. It would only take one minute of your time. My question is still uh, remains the same. Do you find the speakers engaging in their delivery? If it's uh, very much, please press A, B for so-so, or C, not at all. And the next question is, did you find the presentations explain practical examples and useful techniques applicable for your app operations? A, very much, B, so-so, or C, not at all. Once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'd also want to collaborate with you. We'd like to make this a better experience for you. So feel free to hit us 
on the chat box and we got some questions please answer uh, these uh, questions um, about the speakers and the presentation the first question do you find the speakers engaging in their delivery a eh, very much be so so or see not at all and the next question did you find the presentations explain practical examples and useful techniques applicable to your operations a eh, very much be so so and the C is not at all. That concludes our session with Mark Bowman on servicing of energy cylinders. Thank you very much, uh, lovely audience, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you again in about around five minutes, I guess, yeah, for mobile hydraulics aftermarket. Please go back to the lobby to get the correct link to the session.